Hello, my name is Jocelyn Moore, and since I study Greek tragedy, I was trying to come up with a good poem that would shed some light on this concept of Easter joy or Christian joy we've been unpacking in this Easter poetry garland. And some of the most joy-filled episodes in Greek literature are those of homecoming. Our word nostalgia comes from two Greek ones, nostos, homecoming, and algos, pain or suffering. And the experience of Greek tragic protagonists, or consider Odysseus in the Odyssey, reflect the experience of pain or suffering in the face of a homecoming that is not yet to be enjoyed before the joy of an actual homecoming. And yet, as our word nostalgia suggests, there is frequently a sweetness, even amidst the pain, as one remembers one's home. I think this poem relates meaningfully to a poem shared yesterday by Cora Wack and written by Richard Wilbur, because both poems express how joy raises us to desire a heavenly home, while at the same time, love calls us to stay in the world and to share Christ's joy here. Down through the tomb's inward arch, he has shouldered out into limbo to gather them, dazed from dreamless slumber. The merciful dead, the prophets, the innocents, just his own age, and those unnumbered others waiting here unaware, in an endless void he is ending now. Stooping to tug at their hands, to pull them from their sarcophagi, dazzled, almost unwilling. Didmus, neighbor in death, Golgotha dust, strilled, streaked on the dried sweat of his body that no one has washed and anointed, is here. For sequence is not known in limbo. The promise given from the cross to cross at noon, arches beyond sunset and dawn. All these he will swiftly lead to the paradise road. They are safe. That done, there must take place that struggle no human presumes to picture, living, dying, descending to rescue the just from shadow, were lesser travails than this, to break through earth and stone of a faithful, faithless world, back to the cold sepulchre, tear-stained, stifling shroud, to break from them, back into breath and heartbeat, and walk the world again, closed into days and weeks again, wounds of his anguish open, and spirit streaming through every cell of flesh, so that if mortal sight could bear to perceive it, it would be seen his mortal flesh was lit from within now, and aching for home. He must return first, in divine patience, and no hunger again, and give to humble friends the joy of giving him food, fish and a honeycomb.